Yeah, hi there, and I am the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of the lessons that the seven-step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. I have gotten a lot of questions uh, over the years, and my name is Michael, by the way, and uh, I saw your question at Quora. So it says, I want to score 120 on the TOEFL exam. What should I do to prepare for this perfect score? And I noticed... Uh, one of the comments, uh, somebody was uh, saying to memorize the templates and strategies at Noteful. Noteful is a good company. However, I disagree with that comment. I don't think you need to memorize any templates at all. In fact, if you're doing the speaking tasks on the TOEFL IBT, if, if the IBT human raters think that you've memorized a template and trust me if they if they if you're using something that hundreds of other people have already done and that's a memorized thing that's not going to help you get a perfect score on the speaking I'm telling you you want to try to be as natural sounding as you can as original as you can as creative as possible you want to show that you're fairly spontaneous with your language use and you're not just memorizing templates to answer the independent and the integrated speaking tasks. That's just my opinion. That's what I think. Okay, so I don't know why you want to get exactly 120 because, to be honest with you, I couldn't even score 120. Uh, but, I mean, if, if you want to, this is probably what I would recommend. So you seem to be pretty confident, and obviously you must be very, very intelligent, or you wouldn't even try to, to set this goal in the first place. But you've already scored 106. And you said that your English now is a lot better than what it was then, right? So definitely, you know, you can score higher. The question is, can you get a perfect score, right? So my recommendation, I'm going to recommend a few things that I think will, will definitely improve your academic English language abilities and hopefully help you get close or at the goal of 120. First of all, let's talk about the reading and the listening areas. My recommendation is pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to recommend some things that you can do in my online TOEFL course that I think will have an impact uh, on your academic English language abilities. So in the listening part of my course, I have about 40 practice tests. So my recommendation for you is to go through the listening practice test, make sure you're comfortable taking notes, use those notes to answer the comprehension questions, right? And hopefully as you go through the as you go through maybe 10 or 20 or 30, you should be getting close to perfect 100% on, on those uh, tests. If you're getting 100% on my listening comprehension test and my tests are actually a little bit more difficult than the TOEFL, uh, then you should be able to do that no problem. Now also, Go through the reading part of my course, and the main thing during the reading part, and this is a suggestion that somebody else gave uh, right here at, in this area, is to improve your reading speed. That really does help. It will help you to spend more time answering questions and less time reading passages. So as you go through the reading part of my course, increase your reading speed to a minimum of 300, and hopefully your goal is to get to 350 words per minute. If you can do that, that's going to be very helpful on all parts of the TOEFL. For example, the reading, uh, the writing, and the speaking sections for sure. Okay? Now, the next thing. So you're going through the reading and the listening parts of my course answering those comprehension questions, but there's something else you can do that will also help you. So I already suggested that you take notes, right? So you're already doing that. So using your notes, you can write some summaries. You can write maybe 150 word summaries of the reading and the listening passages. And that gives you good practice, obviously, with integrative writing. So you want to make sure you're comfortable writing about uh, other people's ideas. In addition, you can use your notes to actually speak about this information, too. My recommendation is, is be comfortable speaking for about 60 seconds about one of the lectures or the reading passages in my course and even record yourself so you can listen to your recording later on. So if you're doing that practice in the reading and the listening areas of my course, that's going to be very good. Now, speaking and writing. So, 
if you're doing speaking and writing, like I said, it isn't about memorizing a lot of templates. My recommendation is start posting independent and integrated speaking practice tests on my website of my online course. And then I will give you audio feedback, and then part of my job is to figure out what you can do to get better. And I will give you a score every time you do a practice test. I will tell you if it's a score of four, if it's a score of three, or if it's a score of two, or even a score of one. And even when you do them, I'll even give you intermediate scores. I'll say 3.1 or 3.5, or I'll tell you it's 3.8 or whatever. I'll show you how close you are to getting that perfect score in the speaking. And my job is to point out any problems that you might have when it comes to your delivery, language use, and topic development. Your job is to keep a speaking journal because I will, I will give you comments, I will give you suggestions, I might even recommend specific lessons in my online course to help you get better so you want to take notes. So I think after a month or so, it, 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 for sure, after two or three weeks of if you can complete practice tests, speaking practice tests on a regular basis, I will have a good idea on what's holding you down, what's holding you back from getting a perfect score for or so. That's my recommendation for speaking. Now, my recommendation for writing is twofold. I have 40 independent writing practice tests. I have 43 integrated writing practice tests. In my writing practice tests, they go from easy, medium, to difficult. So for you, you should only be completing the difficult practice tests, the, the difficult integrated practice tests, and then you can pick any of the independent writing practice tests. So my recommendation for you is you might do this one or two times. I have an additional service in my online TOEFL course where I will read your independent writing, I will read one of your integrated writing practice tests, and I will correct all of the errors, every possible problem you have in that essay. I will show you what you have to do in order to get a perfect score on that writing. So if I do an analysis of two of your writing tasks, that will tell you exactly what it is you need to do or what you're not doing or what to avoid. I can give you some pretty good suggestions on how you're organizing, developing your ideas. I will also comment on the language use, your vocabulary and your grammar, and how that is helping you or hurting you in terms of communicating your ideas. So if you do that, that's going to be very helpful. And probably your goal is in my online TOEFL course, you probably want to complete at least 10 or 15 of these independent and integrated writing practice tests before you take the TOEFL IBT exam. Again, whenever you do writing, I will tell you how close to 30 you are on that practice test. I'll say it's 22, it's 23, it's 26, it's 28. I will tell you where you are so you can gauge your progress. You see what we're saying? So I think that's it. So it's a combination, I think, of doing some reading and listening practice like I outlined, and you will need to complete a lot of speaking and writing practice tests, and I will be more than happy to provide that feedback for you to show you what you need to do to improve. And ultimately, if, if you look at what I'm doing for you, uh, even if, let's say it's a worst case scenario, you still don't get 120. Let's say you get 118 or 119. You still have improved your academic English language abilities. You see what I'm saying? So, to me, my job is to not just help you get a perfect score. I will help you improve your academic English language abilities for the long term. Forever. I will help you improve your English forever. That's what I would do. All right? So I hope that my information here has kind of uh, helped you. Uh, remember, I've been teaching TOEFL preparation for over 22 years. I've been teaching TOEFL online for five or six years. I've literally taught tens and tens of thousands of students. And I've helped many of them improve their English. And I certainly can help you too.